Hello, and welcome to the demo at series for TIBCO Data Virtualization, or TDV. In this demo at, we demonstrate how to build an advanced level custom adapter. Here is our agenda. We begin by defining custom adapters and outlining their importance for our customers. Next, we walk through a very basic demo of building an advanced custom adapter. Finally, we summarize the contents of this demoette. Let's begin by discussing what custom adapters are and why they are important for our customers. Custom data source adapters are a way for TDV to connect to non-standard data sources. Developers can create new custom adapters by using an existing standard adapter as a template. We reconfigure the template in order to specify the capabilities of the new custom adapter. No coding is required to create a custom adapter. We simply change parameter settings in an XML document. The template we use to create the new custom adapter may be a product-specific data source such as Oracle, SQL Server, or another relational database. Alternatively, we may create a custom adapter based on a generic JDBC template. Custom data source adapters are important to our customers for three reasons. First, they provide a quick and easy way for TDV to connect to data sources whose default settings have been changed. For example, if a relational database product defaults to case insensitive query behavior, but the customer has changed this setting on the physical database, we can create a custom adapter so that TDV is aware of the physical database's non-default behavior. Second, customers sometimes add custom functions to a physical data source. With a custom adapter, we can make TDV aware of these functions. TDV can then push work down to the underlying data source when it sees these function calls in an end user query. Finally, we can use a generic JDBC template if we need to build a custom adapter to a data source that supports JDBC but is not supported by TDV out of the box. In this demoette, we show how to create a custom adapter to a JDBC-capable data source that is not supported by TDV out of the box. Next, let's walk through a very basic demo that shows the use of an advanced custom adapter. Here is the business problem that we illustrate in this demo. We need to use a FoxPro database as a data source for TDV. However, TDV does not support FoxPro out of the box. This is not surprising since FoxPro has reached end of life as a product line and is seldom seen in large enterprises. However, it is still in use by some customers who deal with legacy systems. FoxPro is one example of a family of products based on a technology called XBase. Other older database products, including DBase, use the same technology that FoxPro uses. Let's see how we can connect this FoxPro data source to TDV. In this demo ad, we suggest a step-by-step -step process that you might use to connect to any unsupported data source, not just to FoxPro. To begin, we find a utility viewer program that is purpose-built for our target data source. This is a great first step because it helps us prove that we can actually connect to our data source from the machine that holds TDV. For FoxPro, we found a free utility called DBF View. The name of this utility comes from the fact that XBase databases are persisted as .dbf files. We download and install this utility. When we start DBF View, it somewhat confusingly begins by displaying an open dialog without any sort of splash screen or other indicator that the program has started. We can navigate to any DBF file and browse its data. We now know that these DBF files are valid and we can get to them from our server. Next, let's find a JDBC driver and connect to our data source with a generic SQL tool. This is a great way to help us tell the difference between general connectivity issues and TDV specific issues. We were able to locate an XBase JDBC driver from JSTELS. 
The free version is limited to returning up to 1,000 rows. That's fine for our demo, but if we needed it for production purposes, we would have to purchase a license. We'll use a SQL utility called Squirrel for this step. We put the JSTALS JDBC driver into the appropriate directory in Squirrel, as shown here. Our driver download also includes some sample files we can use for testing. We put them into a convenient directory. Now we are ready to define a new driver in Squirrel. The example URL shown here was taken from the JSTALS documentation. We add the location of the driver to the Extra Class Path tab. Then we click List Drivers, and Squirrel finds the appropriate class name for us. This will be very useful later when we define the new data source in TDV. Now we can define a new connection in Squirrel using the location of our test data. Note that these XBase files do not require a user ID or password. We connect, and Squirrel lets us browse the tables and view their contents. We now know that we can connect successfully via JDBC. Note that these DBF files do not require any kind of FoxPro database server to be running. Our JDBC driver performs all the SQL functionality, and we just have to point it to our tables. This is very convenient for demo purposes. We are ready to create our new TDV adapter. We click New Adapter. Here is the dialog that will help us define the new adapter. We can give the adapter any name we like. We use generic JDBC as the parent adapter. Our new adapter will inherit its capabilities from this generic JDBC adapter. TDV defines the directory for our new adapter automatically, and there is usually no need to change it. Our new adapter will live in the TDV installation directory under conf, adapters, custom, and the final directory in the path will be the name that we gave to the adapter, xbase demoet. We now enter the class name we learned when we built our squirrel connection, and enter the URL pattern that we learned from the JSTALS documentation. When we click OK, TDV tells us to install the driver into our new directory. Let's handle that next. We click OK and cancel out of the new data source dialog. We simply copy the driver into the newly created directory, which already contains a values.xml file. At this point, we must restart TDV so that it can recognize the new driver. Once we have restarted, we can create a new data source and introspect our tables in the usual fashion. We have created some simple level 1 physical views, and here we create a level 2 canonical view that joins two of our FoxPro tables. When we look at our execution plan, though, we see a problem. TDV is doing two separate fetch operations to our FoxPro database and performing the join itself. This will work, but it is inefficient. As you know, TDV attempts to push work down to underlying physical data sources whenever possible. Why isn't that happening here? When we examine the join node, we see that TDV believes FoxPro is incapable of performing a join. We still have some work to do, and the answer lies in our values.xml file. Our parent adapter, generic JDBC, assumes that data sources have minimal capabilities. We'll need to edit our custom values.xml file in order to change this behavior. As you will remember from previous demoettes in this series, the values.xml file created for a custom adapter is commented out by default. We'll need to uncomment the appropriate capabilities and change their value settings. For this example, there are two settings we need to change. The first one we encounter in the file is the inner joins setting. We uncomment and recomment and set the value to true. Further down in the file, we see the SQL 92 join syntax option. Again, we uncomment and recomment and set its value to true. We must save our edits and restart TDV. Now, when we look at our canonical view, the execution plan contains only a single fetch node. 
As our fetch statement shows, the inner join is now being pushed down to FoxPro. Our query is now running in a much more efficient manner. We return the joined FoxPro data and our demo is complete. Keep in mind that there are many different capabilities in underlying physical data sources that you may want to leverage. You will need to examine your physical data sources, see what functionality they support, and edit your values.xml file to specify these capabilities for TDV. Let's summarize what we have seen in this presentation. Custom data source adapters are a way for TDV to connect to non-standard data sources. Developers can create new custom adapters by using an existing adapter as a template. We reconfigure the template in order to specify the capabilities of the new custom adapter. No coding is required to create a custom adapter. We simply change parameter settings in an XML document. The template we use to create the new custom adapter may be a product-specific data source, such as Oracle, SQL Server, or another relational database. Alternatively, we may create a custom adapter based on a generic JDBC template. Custom data source adapters are important to our customers for three reasons. First, they provide a quick and easy way for TDV to connect to data sources whose default settings have been changed. For example, if a relational database product defaults to case insensitive query behavior, but the customer has changed this setting on the physical database, we can create a custom adapter so that TDV is aware of the physical database's non-default behavior. Second, customers sometimes add custom functions to a physical data source. With a custom adapter, we can make TDV aware of these functions. TDV can then push work down to the underlying data source when it sees these function calls in an end user query. Finally, we can use a generic JDBC template if we need to build a custom adapter to a data source that supports JDBC but is not supported by TDV out of the box. In this demo ed, we showed how to create a custom adapter to a JDBC capable data source that is not supported by TDV out of the box. Thank you.